Barack Obama's been out of office kind of a long time now, and because we don't see him every day, it's become really obvious to a lot of people that the whole Obama thing was based on race hatred, anti-white hatred. That's how he got elected, white guilt, anger at white people, and that's how he maintained power. And he stoked it, of course. A lot of people didn't see this coming. Obama seemed like the kind of person who could bring the country together, our first half-white president. He could probably see both sides of the race question. But no, he saw only one side, and it's hate-based. And so it shouldn't surprise you that now that he's a Netflix producer, along with his hate-addled wife, Michelle, he's producing more racial division in the form of scripted dramas. The latest is called Leave the World Behind. It's a fictional thriller about the collapse of technology and what humans would do with no phones or computers. The movie follows a family on vacation at a rental house, and one night they're visited by a father and a daughter who show up seeking shelter. They say their phones no longer work and they need a place to stay. So immediately the white family, because they're evil, that's encoded in their DNA, of course, is suspicious of the visitors because they're black. <sighs> and it goes on and on and on like this. Here's a clip. I'm asking for you to remember that if the world falls apart, trust should not be dulled out easily to anyone, especially white people. Even mom would agree with me on that. Yeah, especially you can't trust white people. They're evil. This is the guy, remember, who became famous at the Democratic Convention in 2004 by telling us there is no white America. There's no black America. It's just one America. But of course, that's not really a profit model in politics, is it? So he's been stoking race hatred ever since, and the disarray around us is the result. Very few people have made a study of this. How did this happen? Uh, but Scott McKay has. He's a contributing editor at The American Spectator, author of the new book, Racism, Revenge, and Ruin. It's all Obama, which it is. He joins us now. Scott McKay, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so, so before we get into the, the larger questions about Obama, just to tell us about this Netflix, whatever it is, drama. What does it tell us? Right. Well, well, what it tells you a lot is the Obama worldview, right? I mean, uh, the trade press reported after this movie came out that Obama's listed as an executive producer because he made copious notes on the script to make it more realistic. Um, but if you watch the movie, what you don't find a lot of is realism. As you noted, uh, the, the movie basically injects race into a thriller about the end of the world. Um, and it basically starts out with a black family. Mahershala Ali plays a guy who's obviously a captain of industry of some sort. He shows up in a $5,000 tuxedo and a top of the line Mercedes saying, hey, I'm the guy that rented you this Airbnb. I've got $1,000 in my pocket to reimburse you for a night of your stay. Um, we need to rack out in the basement because the power's out in the city. And Julia Roberts, who is the, uh, the, the wife in this you know, drama, doesn't want to let him in the house because obviously she's racist. And based on this woman's background, she's a Brooklynite ad executive who's clearly a Democrat who would have voted for Obama. Um, you know, it's like it's all perfect fit, right? It's like, oh, yeah, OK, so this is what the Obamas think of their own voters. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, the clip you played is, you know, you can't trust white people in the, even in the middle of the apocalypse, uh, when most people would tell you that race goes away in the middle of a crisis like that. Um, and here's a point. So remember after 9-11, 90% of the country lined up behind George W. Bush. America was unified as never before, right? So we've gone from there to now, where the Obamas produce a movie basically telling us that we're going to fall amongst each other on race the minute a crisis happens. Um, and I would point to a kind of midpoint between this, which is the Fort Hood shooting. If you'll remember, uh, that was you know, a, a, a crisis situation, and you had a uh, jihadist who happened to worm his way into the Army, shoots up an Army base. And the response from the Obama administration, which had just taken office, was that it would be a true tragedy if we lost our diversity in the military. Not our unity, right? Because that definitely went away. Um, and here we are now where we're making movies about the end of the world, and the first thing that happens is that the black people and the white people are going to fall out amongst each other. And that is, I think, a pretty good summation of where we are, yeah. thanks to Barack Obama and his 15 to 18 years as a, as a 
American political behemoth. Our race relations in America in 2007, let's say, were at an absolute zenith of um, you know, blacks and whites getting along. People actually saw the end of race as a major issue in American politics and society. And the value proposition Obama brought was, hey, I'm the guy that's going to finish this problem off once and for all. This is going to be great, right? People didn't want to vote for John McCain, so okay, fine, let's solve the race problem. And no sooner did he take office than it was like, hey, let me drop the plunger on race relations on this country and we're going to see what happens.